Hi everybody, I'm Mike Nelson and we had a lot of questions recently about why is it so windy and so dry? Well, the root of the problem starts 3,000 miles away in the Pacific Ocean where we continue to have a La Nina, which is the opposite of El Nino, which is a little more familiar to most of us. La Nina is cooler than average sea surface temperatures and that changes a lot of the dynamics with the thunderstorm patterns in the Pacific and ultimately the energy in the atmosphere and oftentimes manifests itself across North America in a jet stream flow that primarily blows from northwest down to the south and east. That favors the northern states with precipitation and brings the Plains and Colorado a lot of wind. And we see that right now in the current jet stream pattern. Notice how all that wind right here indicated the, light, the darker colors here. Those are the strongest winds. So the winds aloft are just racing over Colorado and have been doing that for many weeks most of the time. And especially during the day when we get some mixing in the atmosphere as heat rises from the surface and gets higher up in the atmosphere, that'll pull some of that energy down to lower elevations. So the windiest conditions tend to be during the daytime hours. And I mentioned the storm track tends to stay to the north of us. And so they've been getting some rain and some snow in the northern Rockies and out across the Dakotas and into the Midwest. But we just kind of miss those weather patterns. And with that, we also continue to have serious drought conditions that remain extreme just to the south of the Denver area into New Mexico and Texas and moderate to severe drought across all of the West. Notice how much better it is in the Midwest because they're getting that storm track coming through there more and there's more humidity there for those storms to feed off of and become bigger storms. Now, is this gonna change very much? No, this is what the 30 day forecast is. Wetter than average, off to the north and east of us, drier than average over most of Colorado and down to the southwest. And if you think about that northwest to southeast jet stream flow, that's taking that storm track right along that area. So we're not gonna get much relief on it, nor are we gonna see much of a break as far as the warmer than average temperatures, especially over southern Colorado. Colder on the other side of that jet stream. This is the 90 day forecast, calling for warmer than average conditions to continue for most of the summer and along with that drier than average conditions. So I'm afraid the wind, the heat, and the fire danger is something that's gonna be continuing with us because we're gonna have all of those factors going in, windy, dry, and hot, and that all influences the wildfire behavior. Let's remember that this weather is not in a vacuum as to what we're seeing in climate change because we are seeing a change in hot, dry, windy days as the world gets warmer. Since 1973, we're getting about 36 days that are hotter for high fire danger. And you can see that change, the percentage of fire weather days right here in Colorado. It's really grown about 200% since 1973. And across the entire western part of the United States and for a lot of the rest of the U.S., Summers are getting hotter, especially here in Colorado, back to the southwest. If it's drier, then the energy from the sun doesn't go into evaporating water, just heating up the ground. So with climate change, we are getting hotter summers and greater amounts of smoke expected from those big wildfires. This is what we're anticipating as far as the really smoky days by the time we get to the year 2050. Climate change is making this worse. And it is related to the increase in greenhouse gases from the burning of fossil fuels. We have warmed about two and a half degrees Fahrenheit in the last 70 years. And this is a map from our friends, a graph from our friends at Climate Central that coincides with the fact that carbon dioxide is increasing from burning coal, oil, and natural gas. We're now up to 417 parts per million, and that is shot up from pre-industrial age at Regent times. And it's also the highest in 3.6 million years. Now, each molecule of carbon dioxide acts like a blanket and it helps trap heat that would otherwise escape into outer space. And the resonance time of that CO2 is centuries. As a matter of fact, the carbon dioxide emitted from the first Model T car is still in the atmosphere, causing the Earth to warm. The upshot from all of this is we have to work our way off of burning fossil fuels and use renewable energy resources in order to slow down the warming of our planet. For right now in the short term weather, it looks like a hot, windy, dry summer season coming up. And with that, the fire danger is going to remain with us. Thanks for watching.